Hello, I'm Tony and welcome back to my distortion pedal design series. In this video, published after a bit of a time gap, I'll explore two important aspects. How to boost the output signal after the clipping stage and also correct the frequency response using an active filter. How modifying the power supply BIOS can change the structure of the distortion. Over time, I've lost the materials from the previous videos early schematics, simulation files and hand-drawn drafts. So in this video I'll use the OCD drive circuit to illustrate the effects of specific design choices. For the reminder of this video I'll use the redrawn version of the OCD schematic created in KiCad. Let's get started. The last version of the distortion was musically satisfying, but the output level was quite low. After clipping the signal swing was around 1.5 volts, which is fine for practice but not enough to push the real amplifier input into saturation. If we want a saturated tone or to use the pedal as a booster, we need a signal swing bigger than 2 volts. I will using a 12 power supply, which allowed to rise the output swing to 10 volts. We'll achieve this using an op amp in non-inverting configuration. Recall the gain formula. To get approximately 6 volt gain, which is enough to amplify a typical humbucker's half volt peak signal to 3 volt, I choose upper resistor as 212 kilo ohms and lower equal 47 kilo ohms. Now let's hear how increased output voltage affects the tone. I've assembled a simple booster that takes the signal from the guitar, amplifies it and sends it to the amplifier. No filter, no distortion, just amplification. Here, rising the output level adds more compression, more density and pushes the amp into saturation. Boosting output voltage has a great effect on the tone. But there is a downside. Amplified low frequencies can't make the sound muddy, because signal has bus frequencies rejection. So how do we fix that? Let's take a look at the OCD circuit. I found this circuit in the web and slightly modified it. Let's break down the circuit. The input stage filters and conditions the signal. The gain stage is non-inverting op-amp controlled by a potentiometer. The clipping stage uses MOSFETs connected as diodes, plus one actual diodes to create asymmetrical clipping. A low-pass filter follows removing harsh high-frequency sounds. And finally a volume control potentiometer at the output. But what is this exactly? This is an active high pass filter, it amplifies the signal while cutting out low muddy frequencies. It's based on the second part of the op amp integrated circuit. How does it work? It's just a hybrid of an amplifier and a filter, similar to the gain stage. Let's analyze how it works. By placing a capacitor in series with a resistor, we create a frequency-dependent impedance. The capacitor impedance is inversely proportional to frequency. The feedback circuit consists of a capacitor and resistor wired in series. It's exactly what we need. The total feedback impedance is the sum of two terms. The first is the resistor's resistance, and the second is the capacitor impedance. Substituting this into the gain expression gives formula for transfer function. This gives a frequency-dependent gain, low frequencies are attenuated, while mids and highs are boosted. If we calculate the magnitude of this expression, we get the frequency response. I have plot OCD drive active filter frequency response. These plots were generated two ways. One using a Python script that calculates the formula above, and one using an LT space simulation of the actual circuit. They are almost identical. But deriving and plotting the formula took about 30 minutes, 
while the LT Space simulation took only 10 minutes to set up and run. We see that the gain at frequencies below 100 Hz decreases. This clears up the bus, removing that heavy rumble. The result? A tone became tighter and more focused. Return to our booster. I have add capacitor in the feedback loop that transform amplifier to the active filter. Let's compare sound for different cap values. I'll recommend listening to this with the headphones. Distortion pedal symmetry is important. I already talked about symmetry in the part about clipping diodes, but in this case symmetry influences not only the harmonic spectrum, it also affects the dynamic response to your attack and playing style. One of the most important aspects of this dynamic behavior is the grain of the sound. Different bias setting can produce variously structured distortion. By replacing the upper resistor in the BIOS voltage divider in the power supply with the potentiometer, we can shift the virtual ground from 6 volts to nearly 12 volts, changing the symmetry of the entire signal path. In these pictures, three signals are shown for 6 volts, 7.5, and 9 volts BIOS levels. The first thing we notice is the difference in duty cycle. A higher BIOS results in a signal where the top half of the waveform is wider than the bottom. The more you increase the beard, the more symmetry you get, and with it a rougher grain in the sound. Let's try listening to different bias voltages. <laughs> This is a powerful tone shaping technique and you can apply it to many pedals just by changing one resistor. Our journey comes full circle. We know how to build a distortion pedal from scratch and learn how to modify factory produced pedals for different tone. I hope you now have a deeper understanding of why distortion sounds the way it does and how to tweak every part of the circuit to shape your own sonic signature. Thanks for watching and see you next time!